Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. My name is Tony and I'm part of a team. A Minute to Midnight is a small team and one of the members of that team, I'm very proud to say, is Joni Stahl. And what you're going to hear today is not a normal A Minute to Midnight broadcast. It's twice as long as our usual shows, but it's one of the most powerful messages you'll ever hear and it's Joni speaking at a conference recently. This is not one of the sort of messages where you only want to listen to half of it because believe me, it gets more powerful as it goes. So stick around for the whole thing. You will find it incredibly blessing. It is very powerful. When I was a child, my mom would always talk to me about God, but even as a little kid, like I, I felt there was more like... She was talking to me about God, but I was like... I'm just going to put that there. She was talking to me about God, but there was something in my little heart, like something, of course, looking back, you know, when you're a child, you don't have word power. When you get older, you can look back and say, oh, that's what I was feeling. So I started to look for God everywhere. Like I would pray to God. She taught me how to pray. So it was easy for me to always talk to God. Like it was normal. It was natural for me to talk to God. So... As a little Jewish child, I'm looking at things at his creation, and that is how he began to reveal himself to me. That's how I started to see him. I, I could feel it in my spirit that God was in that somehow. Anyway, so time marched on. I'm seven years old, and I was in my house. It was summer vacation, and the, I heard a voice. It was the first time I heard the voice of the Lord. I didn't know it was the Lord, but I heard him say to me, go outside and so I went out I just went outside and then when I got outside he said now lay down on the grass so I went and I laid down on the grass and this power just came down like this potent power of love indescribable otherworldly love and I couldn't move I just it just poured over me and it was like pumping into my little body. And all I remember is saying, I love you too. So I got up from that place at some point. I laid there for a while. I cut, of course, I kept trying to go back afterwards and he wasn't there. It wasn't there. But I still kept on my march in my mind because I'm really like an A-plus personality and I have this ingredient in me where I'm very forthright, like I want to know who is he, you know, like King Lemuel, who is he? And what is his son's name, you know? That was in me. And so I started to get sick and tired, like no one had any answers because no one knew him. I'm a Jew. And so I said, that does it. I'm not gonna look for him anymore. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm taking control. Now I'm going to be the best Jew that there is. I'm gonna become a super Jew. I'm going to be a better Jew than anybody of, because, uh, you know, Jewish women, they don't go that far in, in the temple, right? But my grandmother was president of B'nai B'rith. Um, so we had, so that was in me. I'm like, I'm going to be better than her. And I, I and, and so I'm very strong like that in my mind. So I determined to be a super Jew. So then I started to become re rebellious and kind of hard hearted. I was kind of mad, like, Where's God? Where is he? I'm just going to take control now, you know? Well, time marched on and my sister got saved. She came home one day from school and she said with some friends that she had been born again. She was saved. I was like, what is that? So she told me and I was livid. I was so angry. How can you do this? We're Jews. What are you doing? But that very power that I felt that day when I was seven years old, was present and it, I was confused about that I was like I, I don't she she's she's parted from our faith but that power that was back there when I was seven is here and she's different so I became like a Saul of Tarsus I thought I'm gonna fight that I'm gonna fight against that because I was mad and I knew something changed but I thought I don't care. So I started to become, I was like a little Pharisee, following them around like they would try to talk to me about the Lord and I'm like, I don't wanna hear it, you know? But I really did, you know? And I was like, kind of like hanging around, like I'd be listening, you know? They'd be talking about maybe what happened the night before. 
you know, we were at Calvary Chapel last night. It was so awesome. So-and-so went down. They confessed their sins. They got saved. And so I'm listening to how it's being done, right? And I'm like, hmm, you know. So one day I said, I've had enough. I was at school. It was the end of the day. And I said to a friend of mine, I said, I've had enough. I'm putting an end to all of this. I'm going over to the Christian table, and I'm going to confront the person that led my sister into this crazy thing. So I went there. The guy's name was Peter, of all things. And I said, hey, Peter, and I called him out. And he was this beautiful young man. I mean, he just, and I said to him, I go, went right up to his face, and I said, hey, Peter, I got something I want to say to you. You're a Jesus freak. And right when I said that, there comes that power. That power moved in right between him and I. And I had a fear, like I feared, like I was like, you know, and I thought, you know, like I, I, I felt it in my, my being, you know, like it, it, it was powerful. But I thought that if I cursed at him and used expletives, I can control that. So I started to curse at him. And then he just smiled like it couldn't penetrate, you know. Finally, I go, whatever, forget it or something. And I spun around. I said, I'm leaving. And I said, come on. And as I was walking away, my friend was telling me, you really told him, you really showed him. And her voice started to just diminish. And I heard that voice again. And I heard it vo that voice say to me, tonight, you will come to me. Tonight, you will be saved. And there was so much power in that that I went from being this cursing Christians in a moment, I had a Saul of Tarsus experience, that if I wasn't at school, I was ready to go down right there. And then I had to wait. I couldn't wait for everybody to fall asleep, and there was a fear because they're Jews. I had to do this in secret. I had to come to Christ in secret, you know? So I waited for everybody to fall asleep, and finally I remembered everything that I heard those Christians talking about how to do it. And so here I was, this little 13-year-old Jewish girl, and I just looked up in that starry sky, you know, that night. My bed was under a window, and I just looked up, and I said those words, and it was real. And I knew something had happened, and I was changed. And But I was afraid to tell people, because if you're not a, if you don't, if you're not a Jew, it's very difficult, because you have a fear of your identity. You know, you're, you're, I, you're still so potently Jewish, but no one explained anything about that to me. But yet I still knew I had received Christ as my Messiah. And shortly after that, I started to receive dreams and visions. And they scared me. Like I was seeing things happening in the Middle East. Like I'm just this young girl and I'm seeing something happen. And I would wake up and I would turn the TV on and I would see it just how it happened. And so this went on through my teenage life. I had a heart to pray as always. I was always praying to God. It was very natural for me to pray. I was always talking to God all the time. I was so happy to know his son's name, you know. Um, I found it to be a great privilege to be able to talk to the God of the universe, my creator. I found this great pleasure to get before him, that I had a place to stand before him, and I used it, like I used it. and. But the dreams became so heavy because they were all coming to pass. It scared me so bad that I prayed for so long. I was like, I, be I was begging God in tears, like to the point, like I was begging him, like, please, please, no more. I can't take it anymore, you know? But the more I begged him to stop those dreams and visions, the more he started to increase them. And man, I, that took me to places you don't even know. So finally, I was so worn out from begging God, like to make him stop, I realized, what was happening. I said, you know what? I, I have to surrender. I have to bow my knee to him. And I did. And I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to ask you anymore to stop showing me those dreams and visions. In fact, I'll accept them if that is your will. Obviously it is. If that's what you want me to do, you want me to see those things, that's fine. And I accept. Well, after I did that, I had no more dreams and visions for a couple of years. It's like, that's what he wanted from me. He just wanted me to say yes. He wanted me to be in agreement with him. Okay, but when you're young, you don't see how the Lord is shaping you. 
because you're a child. You don't understand the psychology. He's, he's changing, you know, you know that scripture that says, for we who with unveiled faces do reflect the glory of the Lord, for he is changing us into his likeness with ever increasing glory. He is changing us and making us like his son. And he starts right away when you're saved. He doesn't waste time. The teacher doesn't waste any time. So my life became very difficult uh, right away. Um, he, there was kind of like a period of time where he gave me a honeymoon of peace with him. But then as I got married, had children, it was on. Okay? But I'm praying all this time. I'm just praying. I'm praying. I'm getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I, that was my practice. I'm getting up at 4 in the morning. I had babies. I was raising babies. And I thought, I don't care. I have a lot of work to do. I'm exhausted. If this is the only time I can have with the Lord, I will go without sleep. Okay? Because I, de I, I made a decision that I would show up. Okay? So, and even like when I was running around holding babies, folding towels, diapers, I always had my Bible open somewhere. So if I'm running by with a baby, I can just kind of look <laughs> and just keep going. But I thought, I don't care. I'm going to take, I'm going to get whatever I want because it was so precious to me. If I can just get that, I can have that for that day. So at some point I'm praying away, you know, and one day I was praying as I normally do, Lord, I'm praying over my children, I'm praying over my husband, this and that. I have my whole prayer line up and I'm going. And one day that my prayer, it just stopped in my mouth. It just stopped. And I knew it was the Lord. And then I heard him say, from now on, I do not want you, no, you no, know, he said, from now on, I want you to ask me to teach you how to pray. And I was like, That's good. okay. So I instinctively knew that he wanted me to lay everything aside. And that's difficult because I'm thinking, well, what about the kids? I got to pray for the kids. But I knew, somehow I knew by the spirit of wisdom and understanding, he was going to take care of that. That he just wanted me to ask him that one thing. And it seemed funny because I was like, here, here am I, four o'clock in the morning. Lord, teach me how to pray. So I was ready to do it as long as it was going to take. Because I was like, man, I know I heard from the Lord. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know what's going to happen. But I want, to, I want it. Whatever he's going to do, I want it. Okay? So two weeks later, put the kids in the bus. Husband goes off to work. I go back to start making my bed and stuff. And then I walk into my bedroom and I felt that power, just that same power. When I was seven years old, it went and it came down and I went on my face till two o'clock in the afternoon and I rose up and I was a different person because I felt this power come upon me and enter into me that didn't leave me for six and a half years and I knew it was on I had no idea what to expect but he came and he just he said, I, he just came in just like that. And it was kind of heavy. Like there, there was a heaviness to it. It wasn't, I, it can barely describe it. But from that moment on, I, I remember the next day I rose up and I stood in my bedroom and I said, I felt it so strong in my heart. And I rose up, I just stood up and I said to the Lord, I pointed my finger and I said, Lord, I've got something I want to say to you right now. I know you said not to vow a vow unless you, because, it, you know, it, unless you delay to keep it. You can vow a vow, but you're kind of walking on some holy ground there. You don't want to make the temple messenger a fool. But I determined, I made up my mind. I said, no, I'm going to show up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up. This is my vow. I'm going to show up every single day for as long as I live, unless I'm sick or there's some emergency. Because that, I said, even if you never show up, I don't care. Because that's my only way to show you that you're worth it. And I meant it. I didn't care. I divorced myself of any kind of like, oh, I'm going to stay here. He's going to show up. I didn't care. There was something in me that said, I don't care if you ever show. I'm not coming to get something from you. I'm coming because... I want 
to be in your presence, even if I'm silent and I don't have nothing to say to you. But it's my way to physically show you while I am in this earth that you are worth my time and the very beginning of it. You know, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. Okay, that's temple situate. So I started to pump in the word, like all of a sudden, it's like he pulled a veil open and I started to pump in the word. He started to open up my understanding. I was looking at things. I, I mean, it. all of a sudden the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. became very active in a way that you can't get there on your own. There are places only the Holy Spirit can take you. Like I was saying earlier today, there's places that I can beg God to take me, but he's gonna say no. It can be a wonderful thing. It can be, Lord, I wanna go on that mission field. I beg you, and he's gonna say no, right? There's something about it, it's so wonderful, no. But instead, the Lord put a sword in my hand and for everything began to be a discipline and he started right away he started taking me through what i didn't really realize until looking back was a soldier's disciplining okay you have to be disciplined in prayer you have to have a revelation of who god is you have to have it by the spirit of the revelation of jesus christ you have to be made in the spirit to see the holy one of Israel and uh, and you and I feared him like I feared God in a way I never did before like I understood that I was coming up before a holy throne and there was a fear that I had and I and I just started he started taking me through disciplines like truth is a discipline he touched you know was taking me through all these different disciplines of his character building. You know, like we all have lives, we have human lives. And what I found out is he builds your character in the stream of life. He's gonna put you out there. He's gonna put you to work. He's gonna put you in things that grate against you. You're gonna go through all that, but then you develop your talent in secret. You have to be alone with him in secret. He's trying to talk to us, but no one listens. And this is not to shame anybody. I'm just telling you what the Lord is telling me as I'm going along. I don't have an agenda. I know him. I know him. I've known him. He's my friend. I know his voice. And I know what he loves and I know what he hates. Do I know everything about him? No. He's unsearchable and past finding out. Job even says, how little is known of him. But I'll tell you one thing. If there's something to be known of God, I want it. So after three and a half years, I start because through each discipline that he was taking me through, the dreams were coming back again. So he was teaching me because when you, I had no idea I was gonna be called into a fight, but he was teaching me uh, elementary lessons. Like if there was somebody I was praying for and I wasn't getting any victory, I would say, show me, Lord, how to pray. Well, I didn't know really what I was asking. I was just thinking he's gonna somehow show me how to pray. <laughs> then he'd show me and I would see in the spirit. I, okay, I, I can give you a demonstration if you want. There was one person I was praying for that was so hard to pray for. The one of the worst people I ever knew. The most hardened, sinful, arrogant, mean person. And the Lord said, pray for him and I'm like okay so three weeks into it I just came against a wall I said I'm feeling nothing I feel nothing you're gonna have to show me how to pray now because I'm not gonna take another step because you're gonna have to show me well then he showed me so that night I had a vision I saw myself in a big room in a house filled with people they were having a social gathering. I could see them, but they couldn't see me. There was a man at my right hand, and in many of my visions, he's there. He's not the focus of my dream, but he's there. Like he was taking me there. And I saw through all the people, like some people were talking, some people were on the couch eating, whatever, but there was all these evil spirits running through them rampantly, and no one can see them. And then all of a sudden, I saw a spirit clinging on 
to a woman who is act acting very promiscuous horribly and you know the Holy Spirit when he'll show you something he'll exaggerate something in a dream because he's pointing something out and so the way that that evil spirit was clinging to her the way it was writhing and moving it was going into her and she was doing the same motions as that spirit mm -hmm. then I saw a man cursing and his mouth was wide open and curse words were coming out and there was a demon attached to him screaming in his ear and every evil word cuss word that was coming out of that evil spirit's mouth was coming out of that man's mouth. Then uh, all of a sudden those evil spirits screamed something terrible was coming and they ran to go meet what was coming. And I heard footsteps coming and so I wanted to go see what it was. And the man that was with me said, go, go and see. And so I went and I saw all those evil spirits, they were lined up like little soldiers and I saw this thing it was like eight or nine feet tall literally it was this enormous spirit and he had a crown and his shoulders were about this big and he had a long robe on and under his robe was armor and I ran to it and I and I rebuked it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and it kept walking and I said it again. I said, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it turned around and it just looked at me and it laughed at me. And I just, I never saw such a wicked face. I woke up and I heard the Holy Spirit say, that is the king of pride that controls that man. So I started to have these visions because the Holy Spirit was teaching me not to shoot my arrows you know he teaches us the use of the bow okay he, he'll teach you how to shoot your arrows but you're shooting into an invisible force okay so he has to show you the invisible because when you're going into warfare you better know what you're shooting at because the enemy seeks to wear out the saints and he will wear you out he's worn me out with me trying to get involved in doing this and that's part of the training like I was saying earlier, okay, so the three and a half years, I knew the disciplines were ending at some point of what I was learning, and something else was coming. And that night I had a dream. Like I knew, like I, I was like, what's next, you know? And I had this dream that I was in heaven. Like I saw myself in heaven. And everything was white, you know, and I'm like myself, like I'm in heaven. And this man, came to speak to me and he was wearing a simple white tunic and I said to him did I die and he said no and I said well, why am I here why am I here then and he said because from now on you are about to start fighting evil spirits more wicked than the ones you've been fighting now and I was like oh. you know I felt afraid I was like you know, like I didn't know what to say. Like I, I didn't, I wasn't, like I felt like, no, you know, no. And he said, turn around. And the whole thing was business. It wasn't this, you know, he was conducting business with me. It wasn't a choice. He's like, you are going to do it. Turn around. And so I turned around and I saw these three evil spirits that are so horrible looking, indescribable, so wicked, so evil. Like they would kill me. They wanted to kill me. I could see it. They would kill me if the Lord had moved away from me. And he goes, follow me. So I followed him down a hallway. And he opened a door and I went in and there was like a bench and he said, sit down. And I thought, I know, I'm going to start speaking in tongues. That way, if I start speaking in tongues, he'll see I don't need anything else. So I started to speak in tongues and he sat down next to me and his face became like lightning, like it just flashed. And he said, are you done yet? And I said, yes. And he said, and he got up, walked and came back and he handed me a book. And it was a golden book. And I took it like I knew it was a Bible, like I knew it was. And you know what sparklers look like? You know how like, it's like fire was coming out of it, like flashes were coming out of it. And he handed it to me and he said, go stand over there. Like it. It was command and I said okay so I stood over there and he goes open it up so I opened it up he said now read from it and I said 
this is what the Lord says. He goes, louder. And I said, this is what the Lord says. And he goes, louder. I go, this is what the Lord says. And he goes, that's how you're going to do it. And I woke up. After I had that dream, literally the gates of hell opened up against my life. Every evil thing came against me. But you see, I knew he called me to be a warrior because he told me so. And all the things that he was leading me up to, I didn't know, but it was prescription because he was calling me to be a fighter. So when you fight the enemy, if you're called to really be a fighter, expect all hell to open up against you because you have, he, he has to let the enemy come into your presence. You have to feel his presence. You got to know him. We know the Lord's presence, right? We feel his presence when it comes in. It's wonderful. We're like, oh, the Lord's in this place, and I knew it not, right? But he wants you to know his presence as much as you know his. You have to know his presence. And you have to know that, what he's capable of. Okay, and the things that were coming against me were so coming from every angle. It wasn't like one thing at a time, and I'm trying to, you know... And it was horrible, but he was teaching me, stand up to him. And so a lot of my fighting began as defensive, you know, kind of just holding up my shield, you know, like, you know, trying to avert blows. And one day the Lord said to me, get up there and fight. You know, there is a moment that he wanted something from me. He wanted me to make up my mind. See, he needs your will, and he doesn't want part of your will. He wants you to be fully willing. He doesn't want any, that's why it says, unite my heart to fear thy name. Give me an undivided heart, or you're going to be worthless. You're going to be good for nothing. That man should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Because really, if you're, everybody wants to serve the Lord. Right? We all want to serve the Lord. Whatever that call is in your life, that's potent. Not everybody is going to be called, it says in the word, to be a soldier. But if you're called to be a soldier, then you better understand the Holy Spirit's not going to waste a second. He's going to call you immediately onto that field, and he's going to put you in the hottest part of that battle, and he's going to let you get thrashed because you have to get thrashed because you have to understand the use of your soul the function of your tripartite being. You have to understand the functionality of your soul. What part, it's like, a, it's a teeter-totter, okay? The Holy Spirit mingles with your spirit. That's where you hear the Holy Spirit speak to you. Your soul is a servant. It takes what it hears from the Holy Spirit and it commands the body. Satan is the God of this age, the evil spirit. It, that's why it says quench not the spirit. He's on the outside always trying to get in. So you have to see your spirit as literally where the king is sitting. And you got to guard that because Satan wants to overthrow that king. Remember that, remember, um, that fight between um, Jehoshaphat and Asa? Remember they went out against the king of Syria? And remember what the king of Syria said to his men? He said, fight neither with great or small, save the king of Israel. That's Satan. He's not, he's, see, when Satan comes against a saint, he's coming against the entire kingdom of God. Understand that one saint embodies the kingdom of God. But God is going to let you feel the wrath of the enemy because he wants you to finally get up because you're going to take beatings. I took beatings where I was like, I don't know, I can't take it anymore until I got to the point where I was, I was done running from the enemy where the Lord said, step forward, step forward. And he teaches you to grasp the hilt of your sword and weigh it. And then he's going to start showing you things in the spirit so that when you, because the, the, the moment you tap swords with Satan, it's on. But he's going to teach you how not to miss. He's going to see, and so back to your soul. 
The enemy wants us to keep busy in the world. Gotta go here, gotta go there. I'm not talking about the things that we have to do. I'm setting that aside, okay? We have to live. There's things that we have to do. But see, your soul, if it gets too active in this world, it's not gonna go in. You have to train your soul to be quiet. You know, um, when you're in prayer, you know, um, your soul, you know how you start praying. You could tell your soul is too active in the world because when you begin to pray, all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's right, I gotta go to the store later and this and that. You know what, those are enemy. That's an enemy. And you have to treat your spirit where the king sits. Your soul is the servant of that kingdom. You decide, you take control of your soul and you decide, get out. You're not coming near the king and you're not, see, because the Holy Spirit is inside. He's, he's like a prisoner within us because the soul gets so strong in the world, we don't let him out. So he doesn't have his way in the world. He can't command the soul. The soul's not listening. It's like a teeter-totter. The soul takes from the Lord, commands the body. So if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit, what are you commanding? You have to hear what the commander is saying. And so he takes practice. So when you are in prayer, God wants you to start operating in the spirit. People, you know, it says if you, if uh, uh, it says walk, it says like we serve the Lord in the spirit, right? But you know, people ask the question, well, how do we walk in the spirit, right? That's how you walk in the spirit. You spend time in prayer. You will, prayer is so, I think what's happened through postmodern Christianity is that prayer has become recreational. Now I'm not gonna put it down. God hears our prayers. He gets it. He knows what we're praying for. He knows us personally. But I really want to define what I'm talking about here because I'm a fighter. I told the Lord, I'm, I said, Lord, what do you want me to say? He goes, don't go beyond anything you know. Now, there's plenty of sermons you can go listen to about prayer. I'm not going to give you a sermon. I don't, I don't do PowerPoint presentations. I'm just here today to tell you that he wants you in the fight. You're called into a fight. And, you know, there, there's, a, there's a, um, a scripture in Song of Songs, and I love it so much. It says, who is this that looketh forth as the morning? Clear as the moon, bright as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. You know what? Today, I'm just going to break from, because I'm going to go into something else. I'm going to go further. You know, today we had a, a meeting today. And it was awesome. We felt the Holy Spirit. He was absolutely present. He was bearing witness with our spirit with so many things. And afterwards, we just enjoyed kind of like, wow, you know. And all of a sudden, I go, what is this? And the whole room filled up with the enemy. And Robert, one of his friends, goes, stands up and goes, the enemy's here. The enemy was there because he sees we got a problem here. See, the enemy has economy of force. So he's not just going to pay visitations to things just to go, hey, let's check it out what's going on over there. He's not like that. His kingdom stands, Jesus said. His, his kingdom stands. So he, he gives command because they network and they know. They see things in the spirit. Their spirits they don't see things completely in advance. They see in advance to a degree, just enough. So I, we had to really pray over this meeting today because what the enemy would like to do, because I bound him from this place in, in Jesus' name. And, you know, I'm going to keep going, okay, because this is what the Lord show, showed me to show you guys. The Lord brought me to a place where I didn't realize there was parts of me I didn't surrender over to him. And I, I kind of knew it, but I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really deal with it, but he wanted to deal with it. And so I got so tired of like having this, like I think he got tired of it and I knew he was tired of it and I knew I wasn't giving my all. And one day I just said, that's it. And I took my sword and I just whammed it into the ground and I said, that's it. And I started, I went forward. I said, I don't care. I'm going to spend the rest of my life 
and I'm going to fight as God teaches me how to fight. And so I spent 40 years alone. And that was, you know why he did that? Because he wanted me to only take orders from him. He didn't want anybody to get involved. He didn't want me to be influenced by this or that. Because in warfare, he want, you, it, everything happens very fast. You have to be ready in a moment. You know, it's in the word it says, the wind listeth where it will. You hear the sound thereof, but no man knows where it comes from, neither where it goes. So is everyone that's born of the spirit. He wants you to be wild. He wants you to come out and just, you know, like I was saying earlier today, look at the prophets of old. Like, I love them. Those are my forefathers. I love the fact that they were running around all over the place that they were powerful. They said it like it was. No one controlled them. They were feared. Kings feared them because they knew, man, if he says something, we're done. There was a fear to them. Um, they were controlled by nobody. Their life was hard. That's because they're, they're like living in, in, like in suspension between heaven and earth. Because you, when you spend all that time in prayer, God starts to take you to places you have no idea even exist. He's going to dig, because the thing is, see, we can have the trappings of church, okay? But he's not interested in how much you know. He wants you. He wants to dig down deep inside of you. He wants to get at your man inside of you. He's not impressed with how much you know. He doesn't care how much you can spell out practical divinity and explain soteriology, hermeneutics. He doesn't, he doesn't care about that. Neither is he concerned about your comfort. Now, he'll comfort you, but he do, he's not concerned about your comfort. He's concerned about your growth, right? Because he's growing us up into the full stature of, the, of Jesus Christ. As Christ is, so are we in the world. And, and, and when the Holy Spirit comes in at your birth, the work of destruction happens right away. And people don't really ever know this. They think, oh my gosh, what's happening to me? You know, and they want to grab that comfort. They want, they want that comfort of heaven. They, and God will do that. He knows per individual and he does things in degrees. But the Holy Spirit has a work of destruction. He has to kill you. He has to kill off everything that is a rival to Jesus Christ. He wants no rival. He's matchless. And if there's anything in you, if you be otherwise minded, he's going to find it out. And I'm saying this because I believe all of you are mature in Christ. I wouldn't just say this to anybody. I would be a lot different with them. But I'm, I, I told the Lord, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to tell these people because they're old enough now to start hearing some commands. They're old enough now to start really going forward because God has a battle, you know, and there's different battles. You're going to battle for yourself. Sometimes there's personal battles. You're going to have to fight for yourself. If there's something coming against you personally, a disease, a wicked person trying to overthrow you in your job, wicked neighbors, you better stand up and you're going to have to stand and you're going to have to fight a personal battle. Then there's another battle. You gotta fight for your family. You gotta fight for your marriages. And don't ever stop. Things are gonna happen. Satan's gonna come in and he's ruthless. He doesn't care. When it says he cometh only but for to steal, kill, and destroy, he'll do it in ways that are so horrendous. You, you may never even recover from it, okay? Then you're gonna have an overall battle that God is gonna call you into because what he's doing is like what he's doing here with this K team. The Lord spoke to me today when I was in this morning, in a morning meeting with the K-team. And I started to hear him say, first I began to say, Jesus wants you to make up your mind. But as I was saying that, the Holy Spirit became active and I can hear him in my mind say, no, tell him I said, I want to speak to each of them individually. He, he refined that this, this afternoon See, he wants each one of you to come into his office. If you are really being called, if you really know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be part, you're being called, you're going to know it. There's going to be no doubt. You're not going to go, I wonder if this is a call. You're going to know it like I knew it. He, and he doesn't have to say something twice. 
Because he's going to go pow, and he's going to put something in you, and it'll be yours forever. <clears throat> he said he wants to deal with each of you. Now, if this does not apply to you, that's fine. But I'm speaking to you because I know Jesus wants me to tell you this. When you fight a fight, you have a captain of the host. You're not going a warfaring at your own charges ever. Don't ever take it upon yourselves to go out on a charge. You have to do exactly, exactly what the priest did of old. Do we fight this fight? Are you going out with us or not? Sometimes the Lord will say, no, you're going to stand back. Because there's things happening in the spirit. He's moving. He's working. And then later on, he'll say, now go out. And I'm going to go with you. Okay? There's that power. So we don't go into any presumptuous battles. Okay? If you do go out into presumptuous battles, those of us who have done that in unauthorized battles, we never forget what happened. Okay? I don't want to go into any more of those, but I want to, I want to get better as a soldier but, there, but this is what he said today. It's going to cost you everything. So what he's saying to me today, to tell all of you, if you are really being called into this fight, it's going to cost you everything. And you're going to see yourself dead already because you're dead already anyway. You're, you're dead. Your life is hid with Christ and God. And he, he'll give you that revelation. But he wants, he was very clear to me today. There's something he wants from those of you. He wants, like, I could see it like in an image. He wants each of you individually to come into his office. And he wants to talk to you. Do you understand what that means? We know in an earthly sense when you join the military, your life is no longer your own. You're devoid of your opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't. You have to die to your own opinions. You have to die to your own feelings and your thoughts and things that you want. You have to die to it. Or I guarantee you, I promise you, Satan's got a hook there and there's a weak link. The reason why he wants to get inside of each of you is because he wants to hear you. He is ready to move. This is what I heard him say to me. This is what he wants me to tell you. This is the other part of it. You guys need to hear this, okay? I'm gonna tell you what the Lord told me. Jesus said to me today about your teams that he has been watching you for a while now, setting up your teams. He's been watching you. He's been observing everything you're doing. But a time has come now, and he showed me Joshua. Remember when Jesus, the pre-incarnate Christ, showed up to Joshua? And Joshua said, are you with us or are you with them? And he said, I'm for neither. But as captain of the host of Israel, do I come? So he's coming to take over, and he wants you to know it. He's coming to take over. It's, he's now going to engage your teams. Okay, he's waited for a while. He's been watching you because he's been waiting to see what you're doing. But now he's going to start commanding. But he wants every single member of the K team, he wants it on his desk, your signature. He's not fooling around. He's ready to move. Okay? He's going to do it. Now, I'm not just saying this. I don't even feel like I should even have to say that. <clears throat> because I know his voice. And I know him. He has been watching this team. And he's been letting you guys do what you're doing, but he's been observing you. But he said to me today, as captain of the host, I want you to... That was the second half today. Because I was like, okay, because my mind was remember him, remembering him saying, I want you to make up your minds because 
we're all mature here, so I'm just going to say it, okay? Because there's many in the, in the group that haven't really made up their minds. And it's not a bad thing. Because I think everybody's kind of waiting to see what's happening. But the Lord says, he's ready now. As captain of the host, I've come. I'm taking over. That's what he told me today. So do you understand the severity of this? He, and I know I'm repeating myself, but that's how powerful I'm getting it from him. He wants something, he wants a private meeting with each of you. And that doesn't mean like, and I'm just gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, that doesn't mean run into your room tonight for five minutes and say, okay, check it out, here's how it's going down, I'm with you. Spend time, dig down deep in yourself, Think about it, count the cost. It's going to cost you everything. Are you willing? Ask yourself, be prepared. It's gonna get ugly. You're fighting forces of darkness that would love to kill you. And if they cannot kill you, they'll do the next best thing. They will touch the apple of your eye. They will touch your children. They will, you know what I'm saying? Now, once you agree, the Lord takes over. That's the turning point. But you gotta mean it. And he doesn't want a quick, okay, Lord. He doesn't want that. And if it takes you a week, if it takes you a month, take the month. But he's ready to move now, and that is the message that he wants me to tell you guys. I've been watching you at it from a distance. I've been seeing everything you've been doing. I've been looking at it. But now I'm coming to take over. He doesn't want you to start going, okay, what are we going to do now? Let's do this. He said, don't do that. Stop it. He's come to take over. He wants you to engage him as captain of the host. You don't go warfaring at your own charges. You're going to do what he tells you to do. And he's going to show you things you have no idea in the spirit, you know, he always says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and unsearchable things that thou knowest not. Those words, when they said, Lord, we saw, you know, the spirit were, were subject unto us in thy name. And Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. He said, Behold, I've given you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power that the enemy possesses. Notwithstanding, do not rejoice in the fact that these spirits are made subject unto you, but that your name is written in heaven. So there's a balance. You're going to expect the enemy to come right in among you. Be ready. There was a Judas. You don't know. The, and you know, I'm not, there's no finger point. I'm not saying get paranoid and get all weird and start looking at people. I'm just saying be ready for anything because what the enemy does, he's a, he's a hider. He will sneak in. You won't even know he's there. And next thing you know, he's setting it up and he'll level it. See, now what's happened with your K teams is it's reached a level with him now where he says, I'm taking over. And he wants you to be so aware of that. And he's going to change your life in that. Once you say yes to the Lord, you're going to stick your own sword in the ground. You know, remember Paul the Apostle you know why Paul was potent? Because he went to heaven. Remember I said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, I can't tell. Caught up into the third heaven, into paradise. And I heard and I saw things that were unspeakable. 
I wasn't permitted to write it. He said, and there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be, you know, go beyond measure, you know, conceited. But he said, he goes, I prayed that that thing would leave me and it wouldn't leave me. Three times I prayed. He said, but now, he said, I rejoice in my weakness because when I'm weak, he's strong. See, we're, our flesh is too strong. It, it wants comfort. It wants to, you know, yeah, I want to be in the fight. But your body's going to be part of it. Be prepared. <clears throat> because your body, you know, it's like, it's like this. Your spirit, it's like, see, I'm wearing clothes right now. In the same way, your spirit wears your soul. And your soul wears the body and your body wears the clothes. Now, Satan is terrified of who's in you. You know, we like to say, oh, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. If you really think about who is in you, no wonder. Satan doesn't want you to have a revelation of that. Because when Jesus says, when it's, you know, by the inspiration of the Spirit, by Paul, he says, behold, ye are raised and seated in heavenly places. In, in Colossians, it says, you know, for, um, for ye are complete in him who is the head over all principality and power. Okay, so we have authority in Jesus Christ, but you see, our authority is only going to be given in degrees to us because it's our choice. Do you understand what I'm saying about making up your mind? It's your choice. It really is your choice. The Lord is waiting for everybody, not just to say yes to the thing that he's asking you to with the K team. It's going to be, he wants that for the rest of your life. He wants you to make up your mind. Do you believe I can do this? Do you believe it? Be it unto you as you believe. Does that mean he's going to do everything you ask? No, he's sovereign. There's reasons he's not going to do certain things, but you exercise that. Because as Christ is, so are you in the world. And he really means that. He wants you to go up and down where you live, where you walk, and say, no, you know what? We're coming out of this. That's how it is. We are coming. I declare a matter. I'm going to declare things, so shall the light shine upon all my ways. That word is a threat to Satan because it's a judgment against him. That whole thing, front and back, done. It's a judgment against him. So when you really get into that word, it's not so you can go, oh, look, I just remembered all those scriptures. You know, God gave me this mind, seriously, where I just remember, I have like, I've read the word hundreds of times. I really have. I really, really have. I'm not exaggerating. I've spent 40 years in I'm, I'm just telling you. And so going over it, it's like the treading of the grapes in the wine vat. You just keep treading it out. You just keep going. You keep treading. It's like, you know, Elijah, when he told his servant, he said, go out to the edge, end, of the, end of the cliff. And he went out and he saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. He went and did it seven times and bowed. And then there was rain. You see, how willing are you for this fight? This isn't a challenge, like I was saying earlier. This, this, is, not, this is not like the Daniel fast or the 10-day challenge. Because when you make this decision, you better be prepared. It's going to be for the rest of your life. And he will begin to start using you right away. And your life is going to totally change. And... You'll, you're going to start going upon the high places. You know, I was saying there's places in prayer that is so he can only take you. He, he's going to start showing you things. You're going to start seeing the invisible. You really are. You know, I've seen things like in the spirit that taught me how to, to fight. Like today, I was telling a story about my son. I was in a 10-month campaign. Like, I have tons of stories, but I don't know why I'm just choosing this one to say it again. But I'll say it again. I've been warring forever, warring this fight, that fight. Sometimes I've had multi-level warfares I'm doing on every side, you know. I'm, um, and it takes a lot out of your body. You get very tired in warfare because our body can't handle all that power all the time. And my son has autism. And he's, he has uh, Asperger's. And so he got involved in some things that were illegal, and he got in trouble. He got arrested. Things were happening to his life. And I'm praying and praying through, but I'm fighting all these other battles. 
And one day he was going to jail. He went to jail and he was going to go to prison. And I'm thinking, I got I to gotta make up my mind. I can't fight a halfway battle. I can't lob something that way and then have a skirmish here. I have to make a decision. I got to fight for his life. And I got to give it all. I, and, I, and I counted the cost. I, I got to think about this. It's going to cost me everything. I know once I engage the enemy, it's going to be ugly. He's going to attack me. He's going to attack my mind. I'm not going to have any more sleep. I already been getting up for 40 years at four o'clock in the morning. There's not going to be any sleep. I'm going to be oppressed by the powers of darkness. They're going to fight for him. And I thought, I got to do it. And I made up my mind and I was sitting in my bed doing devotions. And I just said, yes. I say, yes, I'll do it as tired as I am. And I, as I said that, that's what he was waiting for. Then I felt the act, action of the Holy Spirit. He was active. And then I began to say things I knew that were only coming from him. He was prescribing the war. Like I had been fighting, like he was taking me to a new dimension of warfare, where before I'd be like, okay, I would assess the war. I take it before the Lord. Um, He'd give me insights. Each step I took, it was by him. There's different weapons of warfare beside a sword. There's different things that you're using. Um, but I knew what was coming out of my mouth was of him. So I said, okay, I am going to go to war. I say yes to this war. But this is what I need. First of all, I'm asking you to prescribe the war. I'm not going to step out into that battlefield until you give me permission, until you give me the green light. And furthermore, this is what I need for the fight. I want everything I need, that I will need, that you know that I will need for this fight. And I'm going to lay everything else down, and you're going to take care of it. And I'm going to come in like a sharp, a straight arrow. And I'm going to pursue and I'm not going to stop. So that was that. Three days later, I'm sitting in my bed doing devotions, and pow, he came in. I threw the covers off, and I stood in my room, and I said, it's on. And I said, I'm coming now. And I said, and I, don't, I don't address the, Satan unless he tells me to do it. But I said, Satan... The Lord whom I serve and before whose I am and before whom I walk. I said, you're not having my son. and You're not going to take him to hell. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the righteous. I said, I'm going to stand between my son like Aaron stood between the living and the dead. And I said, you're going to have a problem on your hands by the God whom I serve. And let me tell you, that was the worst 10 months of my life in battle. That was a campaign that was so hideous. There was such a war, such a battle that, like I was saying, I even looked terrible. Like I was, I was so in that prayer all the time. Like I would just get up, I'd shower, I'd wash my face, and I'd be like, pow, I was back again. I used every minute as an opportunity. I said, I don't care if I'm folding laundry, I'm going to keep going. I didn't stop. I bombarded the enemy. That is how you do it. You bombard the enemy. Every time you call upon the name of the Lord, you are bombarding the enemy. Every time you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, you are bombarding the powers of hell. Do you understand? It's not the length of your prayer. It's the strength of your prayer. It's coming from here when you go, that's it. You know what I mean? It's like you, there, you grit your teeth. You grit your teeth in it. So at one point, I was so tired. Like, I felt like I had no faith. Like, I was fighting so much in that battle that I was like, I felt it. I was like, Lord, I'm so tired. I don't have the faith. Like, I, I had to, and you better do it. Don't try to churn something up and build yourself up to some froth. If you don't have it, I, I, I didn't know what would happen, but I just said, Lord, I don't have the faith. You remember when Jehoshaphat went out with Asa, with Zerah the Ethiopian? And remember they were surrounded, and remember he cries out, 
Lord, he said, help us. For it is nothing to you to help them that uh, there, were there as many or with a few or them that have no power at all. You better believe I grabbed that. If that got a hold of the Lord, then that was mine. And I took it as my own possession. And I said, you will answer me. I need faith. I said, I have none. I'm in the middle of a battle. I, I ran out of bullets, you know. And I heard him immediately because he's quick in battle. He said, then ask for it. And I said, oh, and I went down on my knees in my room. I said, I need faith and I need it now. And you know what? It was pow, that fast. Pow, it came in like that. And then there was, I rose up and I charged the enemy and I just came against him. And I said, oh, Satan. And I just started coming against him. And you know what? I, in that power, I wasn't doing it under my power, but I made up my mind. I, the, I, you're in a battle, ask him for what you need. The battle belongs to the Lord. The Lord is a man of war. It's his battle, and he doesn't lose a battle. You're going to lose a battle. He's not going to lose a battle. That's why you better listen to what he's saying. That's why you better grab those scriptures and say, Oh, Satan, you know, you're coming in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against you. You have no part or lot in this matter. You tell him how it is. See, the thing is, he's busy telling us how it is. When the Lord's saying, no, you tell him how it is. You tell him, you're not coming in this place. And he's going to resist you. He's going to stay there. And you're going to go, that I'm going to make your life a living hell. And you, that's what I learned in war. When you begin to war that first week, you bombard the enemy. And you don't stop. And you make him miserable. And you call down that power. Because I guarantee you, the moment you call upon the name of the Lord, you say, Lord, I want the enemy out. And I want you, you know, and he's going to tell you. There were times where I've said, the Lord told me, you command the enemy to bow. Not to me. But you command that enemy to bow to who's in you. There's things he will humiliate the enemy. See, when you're in battle, the Lord really takes over. Now, you're 100% there. He wants you to be 100% there. He's not just going to take over your mind. He's not going to take over your will. He's not going to force you to go this way. He is serious, and he's going to work in you in a power to put the enemy out. Because he wants to shame the enemy because he's been ashamed. Satan's been ashamed. Satan's a liar. We all know all those things. But this is what I believe I feel the Holy Spirit is saying to me right now. The time is very short. There's not a lot of time left. You're not going to have time in a battle to say, uh, oh, wait a minute. I got to go back and read something. It's like, no, you got to do something today. You got to do something right now. And you got to do it like you mean it. You have to do it in the authority. And again, I'm not talking about building yourself up to a froth. That's what the enemy wants. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going out. You know what that's called? The sin of presumptuousness. Remember, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let it not have dominion over me. Well, there's only one dominion, but there's another dominion. If it has dominion over you, the great presumptor is Satan. He'll make you presumptuous. He'll let you think you're doing something for the Lord. And then he will cut you. And he'll take a sledgehammer behind your knees. And then he'll mock you. Ask me how I know. But it was for my good. It was for me to go, that's never going to happen again. The Lord is coming again really soon. I've been having dreams and visions of things. I have a witness in my spirit that he's coming soon. I feel, I feel him coming close. You know, I feel to say, like in the last couple weeks, there was about several days in a row. Do you know, I felt heaven drawing near. I did. I said, Lord, it's like the earth is receding and heaven's drawing near. I feel your kingdom coming. You're coming. 
You know, when Jesus returns, he's going to appear with the 10,000 of his saints, which is a Greek figure of saying innumerable. There's going to be the throne of glory judgment. There's all this action that's going to happen. But you know, one thing that makes me just, I always think, he sees his Jewish friends, his family, Zechariah 13, 6, where they say to him, what are those scars on your hand? And he says, that from which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Could you imagine that intimate moment he's going to have with his family? All's going to be aside. This is put down. Satan's put into the pit. That's wrapped up. That's wrapped up. And then he goes and spends intimate time with the Jews where they get to touch him. That which we have seen, which we have handled, which we have heard, they're going to say, like Thomas, my Lord and my God, you know. And we get to witness that. You know, what I want more than anything, more than anything, is I want to know that I did everything Jesus asked me to do. I want to know it. I want to know I fulfilled everything he asked me to do. I want to know, I want to come in with a weighty crown. I want to come in, you know, I want to come in with that comfort of knowing that I fulfilled everything he asked me to do, as bad as it hurt me. Because the will to love him overtakes the love for yourself. You don't love yourself anymore. You love Christ. And it's, it's a dynamic. It's his life in you that takes over. And everything that you will begin to do in the spirit of love, those are only the things that are going to enter into your eternal life. The things that you did in a spirit of love. And that is even warfare. You know why? Because you love him so much that you would die for Christ. Now, he's not asking you to do that today. That's an expression that is, I use it as an extreme because in all honesty, if it came down to it, I'm dead already. And my life is hid with Christ and God. If that brings glory, so be it. What is my life anyway? It's but a vapor, here today and then it's gone. I want you guys to have that feeling too where you go, you know what? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But to know it by the spirit of revelation. Not just to say it like, you know what? I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Now the faith, life I live by the body. You know what I'm saying? We could do that, but it's, it's galvanized. It's empty. It's empty. But, see, Paul the Apostle can say, what do you do to weep? What do you mean to weep? To break my heart? I'm not ready only to go to roam and die, you know, to go, you know, to, he goes, I'm ready to die. When you have that kind of revelation, Satan can't do very much to you. And it gives you a, you're a potent force against him. Not because you're looking for a fight with him, but because you're a servant to God. And you're standing as the eyes of the servant look into the hand of the master and the eyes of the maiden look into the hand of the mistress. So our eyes wait upon thee, O Lord. You know how he says, I will instruct thee, and I will teach thee, and I will guide thee with mine eye. How are you knowing unless you have to look up? Who's, who are you being guided by? Who's guiding you? Ask yourself. Every day, what are you got being guided by? Who's guiding you? What's in your mind? What are you thinking about? The Lord wants a high caliber of people. And you know, when he died for you, and he shed that blood and he took all that punishment, that was our day that we became king priests unto God. That will be fulfilled in the kingdom. And this is our training. This is not all for nothing. Everybody did not arrive here to this moment in their life. Everything you went through, every loss, he let it happen. It wasn't something that was out of his hand. Every loss was your gain. 
That's how you measure your gain, by your losses. He's going to find out what owns you. So he has to, because he wants to, you to be made a partaker of his divine nature. And he wants no rival, even if that is something in you. I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50. I don't care if you're 98 years old. If there's something in there, he's going to get it out. He's going to get it out. So he can command you, and that power will come in, and it'll be potent. But you have to start in that one spot, you guys. That's what Jesus is telling you today. Everything I've said here to you today, I was saying as I was hearing it. Really, I was. Because he wants you to know how much he loves you with a fervent love. And you know that word fervent? In Greek means boiling. Boiling. Do not be lukewarm, either be hot or cold. Okay, no, be boiling. No, seriously, like, I get really wild in the spirit because the spirit is wild. The more I got wild with the spirit, you know, when I started to come, like, into, my, into that force in praying, I would be coming against things. Things were coming against me, and I'd be like, oh, okay, you know what, Lord, I'm praying this way. And finally, when I hit my, when I took my sword, I go, that's it. I said, you know, I'm not going to come under that word where it says, I'm not going to, you know, that proverb, you boast is one that put your, puts your armor off. It's like, oh, no. And so now when I pray, I come like a force, like I, a force out of heaven because heaven is in me. Now, do I do it all the time? No, it doesn't need to be. But there is time where I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get crazy. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go totally crazy. I don't, I'm going to make the enemy miserable. And I'm not saying that because I want to fight with the enemy. and He is hideous. I really want to avoid him. But if he's going to come to me, I'm going to make him miserable. I'm going to go crazy. And I'm going to pull everything down that I can. And I will bombard him. And I know I'm going to go through some heavy things. But you want to know what? I think about that scripture that says, For I will speak about his mercy to every generation and to about his faithfulness to everyone that is to come. Well, how are you going to do that? When I go to heaven, I'm only going to have a testimony. You know what? The Lord gave me like a couple things before I came out here. Um, Jesus said this in John 17, 20. Not only do I pray for them alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through your word. Also, in Revelation 12, 11, it says, For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In Matthew 10, 9, he says, When you enter into a house, salute it. If they do not receive your word, Get out of there. And when you're out of the city, shake the dust off your feet. You have to have a word. You understand? David had his own word. You know, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, he had his word. How did he get that word? You know when he got all those words? He didn't get it when he was a kid. He got it after he went to war when it was time for kings to go out to war. He didn't get that on the bed of languishing. He got that when he was running for his life from Saul. He got that after he cheated with Bathsheba. He got all of that. You know why? Because God had to let him go through all of that so at the end we can be partakers of that, that juice that came out of that, those ripe grapes. They had to be treaded treaded, treaded, and he's going to beat, and he's going to, they got beaten incense. Cheap incense is just smoky, and it's nice, but it's over with, done. And when you beat the incense small, it's pungent, and it's thick. You know, I really believe the Lord, he, he's saying all these things to you today 
because I feel like he's saying in my spirit to say to you, with great desire have I desired you. I've been desiring you. And I keep hearing him say this individually. He wants to spend time individually with each of you. All the time. He wants private time with you. And not to get there and go, Lord, today I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray over this and a prayer over that. Don't do that. Don't do it. He's your friend. He wants to spend time with you. He waits and waits and waits. He's long-suffering. You know, in the word it says, For the throne of God standeth sure upon this foundation, having this seal. That's 1 Timothy 2.19. For the throne of God standeth sure upon this foundation, having this seal. For the Lord God knoweth them that are his. And you know you're his because you hear his voice. Remember it says, my sheep know me. Because they know what? They know my voice. The voice of another they won't recognize, they'll run from it. Why would you run? There's something horrible about it. Why would you run from another voice? Why would you just go, oh, I don't recognize that. You flee from it in horror. You know, the enemy wants us to get caught up in the comfort of this life. You know, Jesus gave me an image. He said, I want you to hate the deeds of the flesh. I want you to hate it so much. And then he gave me an image of Moses when he cast his cane, that staff down and it became a serpent and he fled from it. He goes, I want you to flee from it like that. I want you to look at it with that terror. I want you to look at the flesh with that kind of horror. That's what I had to kill. So he wants you to walk in the spirit. I believe that personal time he's waiting for each of you. I know, I know, I know what I'm hearing. He's waiting for you. I do promise you, when you begin that moment to step into that private, secret time with him, you're gonna know that what I told you today was the truth. And once you go in, he's gonna, be, he's gonna start to change you. And it's not just so, oh, I feel really good today. I'm full of, you know, I met with the Lord. All of a sudden, you're going to start seeing differently. You're going to go. Because he he's wants to command what you guys are doing. But he has to work individually. That is the first thing he wants to do before he begins to command you. That campaign that I prayed for for my son, there was a part of me that didn't want to give over to the Lord. I kept hearing the Lord saying, ask me what you want. And I was like, I don't know what to pray. I know. But the Lord said, yeah, you do. You know what to pray. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I should say it. I, I don't know. I, and I was wrestling, you know. Finally, the day came. And I had to go to the court, you know. And finally, and I had like two minutes. A friend of mine was picking me up. Literally two minutes. And the Lord said, you have two minutes. And I said, okay. I said, he said, what do you want? I heard him say that, what do you want? And I said, I want him to come home with me. I want him to come home with me. And I want you to wipe out that felony. Ah, I can't believe I said that, you know, like, how could that work, you know? But I said, that's what I want, right? My friend pulls up, I'm in the car. We get there, packed courtroom, standing room only. I'm sitting there, I'm, there's my son in an orange jumpsuit and chains. And I was like, okay. I'm praying the whole time, so I'm there half the day. Some people are going up, going up. Finally, the judge says, calls his name, and he's, then he goes, and he looks around and he goes, is Derek's mother here? He didn't do that all day to anybody. It was just like, get up here, you know? And I go, uh, you know, I'm here, you know. And he said, come up here. And I go, okay. <laughs> and I go through the little doors, and I, was, I went to the podium, and I go like that. And he goes, no, no, all the way up. And I went all the way up to his bench, and he leans in, and he goes, what's your name? And I said, Joan. And he said, Joan, tell me about Derek. And I said, well, 
he has autism and he's got it into a lot of trouble and he goes come on and he goes like this to the DA everybody follows him he takes me into his chambers and he said and he folded his arms and he goes I want to let you know in 25 years on the bench I've never done this but I'm going to ask you what do you want me to do and I go and I looked at the prosecution and I go and he goes don't look at them look at me what do you want and I go I want him to come home with me and I don't want him to have a felony and he goes you got what you wanted go on take your son home you know I remember one scripture I stood on that whole time that said by me kings reign and princes decree justice by me all nobles rule yea even all the judges of the earth so the Lord said quit fighting down here rise above it I'm gonna control that judgment and I went oh I'm going to that higher throne now I didn't know I gave him his space to be God you know I was ready but man I was one happy mom <laughs> you know but this see do you understand I'm nothing special but this is what Jesus wants to do for you he wants to work in the impossible that's where he gets the glory you got to ask for the impossible you know what I'm saying like go above and beyond like one day again I mean I know I'm kind of going on but I really want to share this um, I was at a meeting and I was going to these meetings every week and there was a girl that I never really met like she never spoke to me she would just be standoffish with me she was a Catholic girl and I mean if I would look at her you know like you know how you might want to look at somebody so you can greet them you know like oh hi you know she would be like you know and I was like oh it's all right you know and this class that I was in was to be an assistant to the chaplain you know like I can just be an assistant you know go on rounds for them just be a part of it like I thought I just want to be a part of something you know and so I'm sitting in there and so week after week I see this girl everybody in there is Catholics I'm the only Christian woman in there, but I thought, I don't care, you know, I'm not here to, you know, sound a, you know, toot my horn. I just want to be a part of being a comfort to people, you know. And so one day this chaplain comes in and she was a chaplain of the oncology ward. And so she was talking about death and all these different things. And all of a sudden this girl starts sobbing and she's like, what's wrong with you? And she goes, I have cancer. And she started sobbing. Man, I felt the presence of the Lord, and I went, oh, no. She goes, the chaplain says, okay, let's all break. Let's all go out into the hallway, get some refreshments. I thought, I'm not going out there. Because I know when I felt that, I was like, oh, because it was that power that entered in. I said, I'm not going out there. I said, I'm more than happy staying here. So everybody goes out. And then this woman goes out, and she comes back in, and she goes, what are you sitting here for? She goes, you should come out there. And I go, okay, you know, because I was, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen, you know. So I'm like walking. I'm like, I'll just go to the bathroom. And they were standing in the hallway like I'd have to go by them. So I'm coming toward them, and all of it, and they're patting her on the arm, and they're handing her tissues. And she just points, and she goes, it's you. And my heart was pounding, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what is she, what's happening? Like, why is she saying that to me, you know? She goes, ever since I've seen you, and I'm thinking, you haven't even looked at me. Like, I always wait. I'm thinking in my mind, I'm always waiting to greet you and say hi to you. Like, but this is what she said. Ever since I saw you, there's something about your eyes. There's something there. And right then, I felt that authority, and everybody goes, pow. They just scattered. So I took authority. <laughs> and I said, do you want me to pray for you? She goes, okay. And I said, okay. Step over there. So she stepped over there and I go, give me your hand. And I asked her to make up her mind. Are you willing, before I pray, I'm going to ask you, are you willing 
to stop believing the Lord for peanuts and to believe him for greater things? She goes, yes. And I go, and then I close my eyes and I, I worship the God of heaven in a few words. I declared him as being God of all. And then I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke that spirit of cancer and I command you to come out of her. I didn't plan to say that, but it just, pow, it came out like that. And then it was done. She goes, oh, thank you. Right away, the enemy was, look what you just did. You gave hope to a person dying of cancer, you know? And I was like, man, I'm going home, you know? So I went home. I was tossing all night. The enemy was like, look what you've done. You made a fool out of yourself. And I'm like, ah, you know, just, ah. So the next morning, I got up. I didn't really sleep. And the phone rang. I was like, hello? She's like, hello, Joan, this is Tammy. I'm like, oh, no, she's going to tell me, like, I just want to say, how dare you? You know, you gave me hope, you know. I was ready to take that beating, like, I'm totally sorry. I was out of line. Like, I was ready, you know. She goes, I woke up this morning, and that egg-sized tumor is gone. It is gone. I go, okay, still go to your doctor, you know. So she went to her team of oncologists, four independent oncologists, still did a biopsy of that area gone you know and then there was another time that for a whole year I kept having a vision of a hospital and every time that vision I'd have a vision I was deeper into the hospital and deeper into the hospital and deeper and deeper and like and I was like for a whole year going what is that you know I was like what does that mean like what are you showing me and it started to bother me until and then finally the vision ended with me arriving at you know like how you come to you know they have like desks you come to certain parts of the hospital where there's desks, you know? And the dream just stopped. Well, right around that time, some, a friend of mine named Gloria Rogers, who's a mighty intercessor, she's in her 80s, and I don't talk to her very often because intercessors, we, we're, we, we stay away from each other even, you know? And she called me one day and she said, hey, are you busy? And I said, and I started to feel that power. I was like, oh, what's happening now, you know? Because that doesn't just happen. I mean, that kind of really never happens. And I go, I'm not doing anything. I'm just doing devotions. And she said, listen, there's a guy in the hospital. His name is Joe. He's got six weeks left to live. He has pancreatic cancer. He's a Catholic. And I said, pick me up. I'll be ready in 15 minutes. So all the way up, we were speaking in tongues. Man, we went into our prayer language. Man, we didn't mess around. We said, we're going to pray in tongues. And we just started going in tongues. We were praying. It took us 15 minutes to get there. And uh, we got in there, and all of a sudden, I was like, okay, we go this way. And, I was like, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I can, she's going like this, <laughs> like this. And I'm like, no, we go this way. She's like, how do you know? And I just went. We arrive at the desk. Heard the kids are coming out. He has older children. They were, like, crying. They're saying their kind of last goodbyes to Dad. But right then, I made up my mind. But before I did that, when I hung up the phone, I forgot to say this. I heard that word in my mind, for he shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I said, okay, pick me up in 15 minutes. That's what happened. Then, so when we got to that threshold, I said, okay, listen, Don, Gloria, listen to me. That same authority entered in. I said, listen to me. The Lord said to me that he's not going to die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And my, my carnal mind was like, do you hear what you're saying? You can't say that. Just go and pray. Maybe he just needs comfort. Then I knew it was on. Okay? Because the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is the enemy. Always weak. And I walked in that room, and that their power came over me and entered into my being. And it was like it was perfect and it was high you know what I mean like it was high functioning in the spirit and sharp and his wife was and I said hi my name is Joan I said are you a Christian she said yes I go you then please stay and I went to his his daughter I said are you a Christian and she said yes I go then you're allowed to stay like I look back at that thinking how could you have said that I'm just going with the Lord right and I walked over to him, and he's in a fetal position. He's in terrible pain. And I just took that, that authority. When I say I took that authority, I want you to hear, I wasn't taking the authority. It was in me, and I was going along with him. And I said, Joe, I said, my name is Joni. I am a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he asked me to come here. What do you want him to do for you? 
what do you want? He goes, well, I haven't been in church. I go, what do you want the Lord to do for you? He goes, I want to go home. I go, okay, give me your hand. And so I took his hand and man, this power came over me. I started, I was started to pray. I couldn't even pray in English anymore. That power of those tongues came out. But I wasn't screaming it out or anything, but it just took over like I couldn't pray in English anymore. And with my eyes closed, I saw his pancreas. It was eaten up. But as I was praying in tongues, I saw in my vision the pancreas grow. As soon as it reached its full, healthy size, it stopped. It's done. And then I slowly felt the Holy Spirit depart, like, come and go like a dove. Just go. And then all of a sudden I just really felt like myself. I was like, oh, gee, you know, you know. And I was like, well, I guess we'll be going now. <laughs> like that. So we left and then the enemy was like, look what you did. You told a dying man he can go home. I'm like, I just was doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I just went with you, Lord. And I did say to him, I said, Joe, Jesus says you're not going to die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's when he said, I haven't been to church since I was six years old. And I'm a Catholic. And I go, what do you want? So the next day I get a call from Gloria. She's like, oh, you're not going to believe it. I'm like, go ahead. I know. Like, I'm ready to take, you know, I'm ready for her to go. Oh, he got worse, you know. An hour after you prayed, he was sitting up in bed. And he was hungry. And he was thirsty. And he was joking around. And everybody was like, it's just something that he's doing right now. Everybody's going to go back into the throes of death. But he didn't. Next thing, they're like, they moved him downstairs. Okay? So a couple of weeks pass. No, then it's like some time passes, and they're like, you're never going to believe it. Joe went home. And I'm like, what? Joe went home? Yes, Joe went home. Now months pass, right? Months, months, and months go by. Gloria calls me again. I'm thinking, oh, she's going to tell me he's sick again. He wasn't fully healed. She goes, Joan, I got to tell you. Joe started going to church with his wife. And he became an elder. And he's declaring the works of the Lord. <laughs> See, he wants to be known in the impossible. I'm not going to go any further tonight. That was all Jesus wanted you to hear tonight. And... Whatever you've taken from this, you know, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit is the witness bearer. He will take what is, he said, he will take what is of mine and show it to you. He will bring things to your remembrance, what he's taught you. The Holy Spirit's going to take something he said to you today, each of you. And it's going to be very intimate. It's going to be very personal because he needs it to be personal with you, each one of you. He wants you alone. And I'm going to pray now because I'm going to seal this up now. I'm going to pray over every one of you. And then if there's any, you guys want to ask questions or not, I'm free for that. Okay? Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, and Lord, we just want to tell you, we feel like we're breathing your glory right now. We're not just breathing earthly air, we're breathing your glory. We are citizens of heaven on earth, and we are breathing the very air of heaven in prayer. When we are in prayer, we are in heaven with Christ. We are never more in heaven with Christ. When with you, Jesus, when we are in prayer, for Christ has not entered into heaven itself made with hands. It has not entered into heaven made with hands, but into heaven itself, into that temple. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. And Lord, that is where we sojourn while we're on earth. And I pray over every soul here today that they begin to sojourn in heaven. That, Lord, you will make heaven 
more real to them than this world that is corrupt and dying and being is rotting away. It's going to depart and you're going to take it away. Lord, I pray that you enter into each and every individual life of these people for you are calling them by name. You are summoning them by name. Not calling them as a group, but by name. Because you have something that you're going to do. And that's not a vague thing when I say something. But those things belong to Jesus Christ. Lord, we come in the name of the Lord. And we declare that we are an army of the Most High God. And no weapon that is formed against us will ever prosper. Because if we are cast down, then you are cast down. And that is not possible. And we are not going to be a people that you are ashamed of. We don't want you, to, we don't want to ever think that you died on that cross for nothing. That we took advantage, Lord. That we were by, by a banqueting table of love. And the banner over us was love. And we, for, we didn't eat, we forbared. And we didn't eat out of your table. Lord, I pray that with this K-team and everything that you're doing, not just with the K-team, because you're showing me right now that this is going to be a conduit of your power, that when you get into the very fabric, into down deep, and you dig down deep into the hearts of these people, it's because you're going to blaze your way through them. They're going to be like men who are torchbearers, women who are torchbearers, and they're not going to fear. They will be like David's men. And Lord, you did, you are a mighty God. You are the Holy One of Israel. And Lord, we want nothing less for these people. Rather, you want nothing less. You're not just inviting. You're coming over to take over now as captain of the host. You are the captain of the host of your own army. And we want to be mighty. We want you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lord. We want you to command us. We're not going warfaring <clears throat> at our own charges. No way. So we present ourselves to you today. And I know. I have the heart of everyone in this room, and I'm not going to mess around, Lord. I know that we're in, in, in acting, we're interacting with the judge of the universe, and you're waiting for us to make up our own minds. When we say, Lord, who, oh, whom do you serve? Well, we serve the Lord. How do you serve the Lord? How do you serve me? Lord, when you ask a man to serve you, when you ask a woman to serve you, Lord, you give them everything they need to serve you. You turn them into another man like Saul, King Saul. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, it said he turned. You gave him a heart of another man. He became another man. He was not crowned king until he went to war with the Philistines the second time. Lord, we are not going to be kings and priests, Lord God, while our faith turns into jelly. I pray right now in Jesus' name over everybody that they be filled with the power from on high. That they would come behind in no gift. Lord, we want your Pentecost again. We want to speak in tongues. We want to prophesy. We want to walk, Lord God, among the stones of fire. We want to walk. When we walk in this earth, we want to say, powers of darkness, stand aside. We're coming through. And they have to obey. But you're waiting for us to obey. You're waiting for us to bow our knee completely and to say, Lord, it's going to cost me all I have. It's going to take cost me everything but you are worth it and I want nothing else besides that I want all of it now no more playing around I don't want a piece here I don't want a piece there I don't want my own opinion I don't want to do things my way anymore all I have is thine King David said that Lord who am I and who are all these people that we should give so generously unto you when everything we have you've already given unto us everything under the whole heaven is yours you claim it 
that we own nothing. It's a farce. We own nothing. You give us life to live. You give us the clothes to wear. The air we breathe isn't ours. It belongs to you. All the breath of mankind belongs to you. Now, Lord, you want a people that you can command, a people that are fearless, but you have to. We know what you're saying. You want them to come. You want them to say, Lord, I will give, I give it away. If it costs me everything, take it away. Lord, I pray that for each person that they will see by the spirit of the revelation of Jesus Christ now. That you cause their eyes to be open and see you like Paul, nothing less. I'm not just gonna read about Paul and say, well, that was wonderful. He was caught up to the third heaven. He saw things unspeakable. He heard things unspeakable. I'm not gonna just look at Paul and say, that was wonderful. I'm like, no. We want what Paul saw. We want to hear things unspeakable. We want nothing less from you, Lord. I wouldn't be here. You know me, Lord. I'm not going to mess around. I don't mess around. And I'm not going to hold anything back. Because you didn't hold anything back. You didn't. You held nothing back to save us. So we are going to hold nothing back. We are going to hold nothing back. We're going to bow now. We're going to lay our life down. We're going to consider nothing anymore of our own. We're going to say we are dead in Christ. We are dead. And Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to thank you so much for the honor and the privilege, Lord, of being called a child of the most high God. Oh, Lord, when I think about the reception we'll receive in heaven, what glory, what rejoicing to be with the spirits of the just men made perfect and an innumerable company of angels. And Lord, I pray now that your Holy Spirit now take over from this moment. Well, that was incredibly powerful, and I don't get sick of hearing it. It just blows me away. If you want to learn a little bit about the K teams that she's talking about, that's the Kingdom teams, and you'll find in episode 59, I interviewed Derek Fulmer, who is the founder of that movement. Please also visit a minute to midnight.com. You'll find where we put all of our shows and other articles on the website. There is a donation button if you feel led to help us out. We greatly appreciate the donations because that does help us to keep this running. I also write and record all the music for our shows and you'll find a link to my music at rockshoresounds.com which is on our website as well. On behalf of all the team at minute to midnightcom this is Tony signing off. Catch you in the next show. Mm-hmm.